Okay, guys, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I'm going to talk about how to integrate some of this stuff into a college level uh, capstone course. Um, I took it in, I think, 14. I'm trying to remember what year it was I took it in. Uh, 14. I work at a community college and I wanted to figure out a way to integrate this in. So we now have two separate courses. One of them is a capstone course where we take all the cat in, within the cat degree uh, and then we, we utilize this stuff. And that's what I'm going to show you now. Uh, we've since created another course that is a no prerequisite. Anybody can take it. And it, it more closely mirrors what we did at the, at, at the thing. Um, so the capstone course is a little different. So my goal was to get college students interested. So there's three different ways I could think of, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I'm not going to talk about sex or drugs. So I figured rock and roll was a great way to get them interested, right? Um, and so that's, that's the logic behind it. The drafting 251 class was an existing class in the curriculum. Uh, it was a product design class. And so what we wanted to do was say, OK, instead of designing any product you want, instead of a shoe or, or whatever it happens to be, we're going to do a guitar. Nobody balked at it. They loved that. They were fine with it. Um, so we wanted to develop this into a capstone course. It was an elective course. Um, we went ahead and rearranged the curriculum, made it a, a capstone course that was in the fourth semester of their time at the community college. And so they already had um, all their CAD. They had 2D CAD. They had parametric modeling. Um, they had done all those different engineering type classes. And so this was a way of integrating all that information together. Uh, and we wanted to do STEAM principles. I love, Timothy, how you said uh, you wanted to put on the slide uh, the this, this stuff there and make it big. So I did the same thing. So S is science, T is technology, E is engineering, A is art, and M is math. So we included all those in that because you have all those little pieces of the puzzle. It's also a great way to sell the administration. <laughs> course layout for this particular course, 16 week semester, just like you know most everybody else has. We do four weeks. Um, at the beginning, which is conceptual design, research, things like that. Ten weeks of prototype production, two weeks of documentation at the end. We'll talk about that. Uh, but we only do about one week of research. That's where they research the history of electric guitars and how, how they came into being and what they are. For some of them, they already have a lot of knowledge in that. Some of them have no idea. Uh, I don't know who said it before, but a fair amount of our guitars, I think, become wall hangers. There's a lot of students that, that are in the CAD program that aren't guitar players. Now, there's some that are, and, and they tend to make different styles of guitar. It's kind of neat to see that the, the styles vary whether you're a guitar player or not. Uh, but a lot of them are going to be wall hangers. That's why some of the guitars you see back there are crazy looking, but they may not get played that much. Um, but that's what they do. So uh, conceptual design, one week. Design development, two weeks. We're going to go through some of these. Prototype production there, and then documentation. So. Research, in that portion, um, they researched the history of electric guitar. They use the library and the internet. Again, we only have two class periods per week, so they have to move pretty quick on this. But I've found that if you give students a week to do the project, they'll do the project. You'll get the exact same product in a four-week segment. If you give them four weeks, it'll be the exact same product. So I have no problem speeding that up and making them go quick. Um, they develop a presentation on their findings. The beauty about this is if, they, if I get 10 students in a class and they go all go out and do different research, um, they, they get access to everybody else's research when they do the presentation. And so they can see all the other research everybody else has done, so it kind of magnifies uh, that research product, which is wonderful. Um, one of the things I ask them to do is hypothesize future guitar developments. That way they can kind of say, okay, I've done the research on the history. Here's where electric guitar started. Here's where we went through it. Here's where we're at right now. What, what's coming next? You know, and they get some crazy things, but it allows them to kind of think outside the box and think, what could I do or what could I integrate into my guitar that maybe nobody's seen yet? Um, conceptual design. So 10 and 20, this is a thing I do. I actually took this from the, the architecture curriculum. Uh, they have to do 10 designs in 20 minutes. They have two minutes each. Boom, 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 boom. And what I give them um, is this this thing right here, and it has all the different uh, guitar designs that come from this, the STEM program, and I put them all on one thing, and those are, when I print that out, those are really, really light. So they can see them, they have a guide, but they, they get 10 printouts, and this is by hand, right? So there are 10 copies of this, and they have to do one design on that in one minute. And then you do the side here, or the front there, um, and then they have two minutes, I set the clock, I said, okay, next, go. And they do 10 designs in 20 minutes. What you'll find is that students, at the very beginning, what do I put down? What do I draw? What do I draw? What do I draw? And I said, I'm grading this, guys. You better get something on there. And so then after the first one, the next one comes easier. The next one comes easier. The next one comes easier. By the time they get to the fifth one, they, 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 oh, I don't got enough time. You know, they're doing all this stuff. And they get some pretty cool things. They may not use any of them. But it's OK, because it's got their mind thinking. And all of a sudden, they go through all these different designs that, that maybe they hadn't done before. Um, 
obviously they lose their inhibitions about proposing ideas pretty quickly, which is beautiful. And again, they have to present all those to the other students, and so then they start seeing each other, and there's this cross-pollination of ideas. It's wonderful. So they pick three concept designs. You cannot be an existing design. You cannot copy it. So you have to come up with something original. I don't, I don't care what it is. And it has to be holistic. So the body, the headstock, the fretboard, and the controls all have to be the same, right? So if we're in architecture, it's like not making an entrance, you know, for a, a strip mall on a house. You know, you, it, everything needs to be cohesive. And so it has to be completely holistic. And then design presentations. This is an opportunity for design criticism. Keep in mind, this is only a two-week process. Um, I invite in professional guitar players, designers, and fabricators to jury this, to, to say, okay, this will work, this won't. Keep in mind, they're only three weeks in at this point. But, but this way they get a good idea of, yeah, that's, that's neat looking, um, but you'll never be able to play it. You know, and then they can, they can make that decision. Now, some of them still go forward with that. But, um, here's an example of them in one of the class periods. They're working on the dry erase board. I think they're making it look like an airplane. That never went anywhere, but they were doing all kinds of things. Here's examples of them working on the dry erase board, figuring out a mechanism for a guitar that actually did get built, which is kind of neat. She wanted it to stand up like a golf bag where you set it down and the legs pop out. And she, and she did it, an 82-year-old Hungari Hungarian immigrant. Wow, wow. Beautiful, she did an excellent job. Okay, design development, select one design to develop. Uh, it needs to be an original idea and it needs to have adequate complexity. That's a little bit subjective, but as the instructor I can say, you know, it needs to have adequate compl complexity. You can't just do something very simple. I make them create a foam model. So this links the CAD data to the real world sizes. Um, I think I have a picture of that. Oop, right there. I, make, I use just cheap foam, right? We go buy cheap foam. But a lot of times what happens is if you get lost in CAD, all of a sudden you have a guitar that's like this big. You know, or, or you got one that's like this big, you know, <laughs> this little tiny thing. And so by, by making them make a foam model, um, they can do that. They also, the beauty of that is I, we have hot wire cutters and we make them cut away at that foam really quickly and they can start saying, oh, well, what if I sculpted this? Mm -hmm. No big deal, just take the hot wire cutter. And if, they, oh, I took too much fat, put some glue, put it back on. <laughs> now, we don't use that, we don't scan it or do anything, but they can use that as a guide to, oh, okay, that's good or that's bad, right? Um, fluid design changes allows them to move really, really quickly. Um, integrated advanced manufacturing aspects, so they have to start thinking about what are you going to CNC machine? What are you going to laser cut, etch, inlay? And what are you going to 3D print? One semester I required them to do all three. I haven't done that since, but one semester I did require them to get to laser cut something, you had to 3D print something, and you had to CNC, obviously, the body. So that was kind of a given. Um, I haven't done that since, but a lot of students still do quite a few things. But the 3D printing was, you don't always need something that's 3D printed. So here's an example of some of the early designs for this guitar. I like this because they had a holistic design. They wanted an egg shape and then expand out from that egg. This student was interested in a, a video game. I'm not a gamer, so I don't really know what the video game was, but it was some video game where this is in the video game. So if anybody knows what that is, I, I don't know. Um, this student was obviously interested in hunting and outdoors. Okay, um, so design development. So they have to go ahead and take the 3D CAD model further. Um, standard components are already modeled. We already have the standard components modeled in SketchUp, in Inventor, in SolidWorks, and working on modeling them in Rhino as well. Um, they have to create the assembly. So they're not modeling the components that come out of the box. We already have those modeled. There's no point in that. I want you to concentrate on the things that are unique to you. Uh, locate hardware, or ergonomic considerations, make sure that you're not going to kill yourself like that guitar. Uh, scale length, uh, they do the mathematical calculations of the frets, the same thing you guys have been talking about already. Um, full development, dimensioning, and 3D renderings, they have to do some, some rendered images from CAD, some kind of rendered image. And so you'll see that we have uh, components. These are the SketchUp components, but we model a bunch of those. We got to have like some repository where all these are thrown in there already, there the and that way everybody has them. That would be good. The community, um, it's coming. Good. I think it's excellent. Cool. Um, this was a custom one. We wanted the the, the integrated um, uh, amp, onboard amp. We went ahead and created a box for it, and we 3D printed the box out. It has an on-off switch. We took the battery compartment and put it in there. Um, so that was an example of that. Here's some of the students working on some of their 3D designs. Um, here's some of those that are going through there, um, different models of the guitars, and then some of the documentation. Um, you see the renderings. And then we go through the production, right, development of CAM files, STLG code, and then we use all those different processes, and then we use some, obviously we use traditional techniques as well. We have a nice shop that can do all that. This is actually our, our older um, CNC. Um, this is an example of a very a warped guitar. She wanted it to look like fluid, and it very much did when she was done. This is the gear tar that's back there. Um, different things. He laser cut a, like a floral design on there, etched it in. 
Uh, they still look kind of neat when the finish came off, but this one we were doing the, the banding work there, and this is the 3D printed face hugger there. Five minutes or seconds? Five minutes. Okay. <laughs> Here's an example of our um, the laser. So we used the laser to inlay these, and, and we went ahead and lasered out the path for the metal first, put the metal dust in, the cyanoacrylate, and then we sanded that off, and then we came back and did the, um, the flowers. Prep for finishing. And then you apply the finishing car. So then we have all the, the lesson on you know, the chemical reactions and things like that. Things that will work together won't work together. Uh, so oil finish acrylic, multi-layer designs, water transfer. So we got a, a hydrographics tank. So some, some guitars to be transferred if you have a, a film that you want to apply. Um, swirl dip, wonderful lesson in chemistry. And we finalize the finish with buffing. Here's an example. That one that she wanted to look like liquid, she used a, a, a chroma shift paint. And so as you turn the guitar, it looks gold or purple or red or, or whatever. Uh, it doesn't look, it looks like a, a blob of oil floating in the air. Um, examples of different, that one looks like he murdered a cow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, looks, um, he was into like heavy metal and things like that. He goes, I want this to look aggressive. I think you got it, buddy. <laughs> um, it, was, it was interesting. Um, this is after buffing on oh, that guitar that's back there. This student actually had a background where he knew how to do um, like automotive finishing and stuff, and so he had a background on that. So his was obviously much at a much higher level from a finishing standpoint than some of our other guitars. Okay, so um, assembly guitars, the wiring, electrical principles. We go through the function of pickup, grounding, integrated amplifier. We go ahead and make them do that. That way they have that integrated amplifier in the guitar. It's kind of fun. And then intonation and tuning, of course. Um, here's examples of some of the wiring things they do. A lot of my students, for some reason, end up doing. They want to put LEDs in it and things like that. So these are just LEDs on the right hand side. This is that EL wire that you just uh, put a, a charge to and it lights up the whole, and you can cut it to whatever length you want. Um, and they hear they're intonating it. And they get pretty happy when they get to this point, you know, because they, they put a lot of work in. But keep in mind, we still got a couple of weeks left in the semester at this point. Um, so what we do for the last two weeks is we finalize the CAD drawings because there's always changes that happen <coughs> during production. So they have to go back to their CAD drawings and say, okay, here's the things we changed, right? Um, we photograph the project. So we've teamed with the advanced photography class. The advanced photography class takes our guitars to, at, at the two-week mark um, to, towards the end of the semester while they're finalizing CAD drawings. Uh, the advanced photography class is using it as their final project for the semester, and they do tons of photographs. So the students that built the guitar end up getting 100 photographs of their guitar with different lighting and different positions, close-up, detail views, full views, all that kind of stuff. And it works for both classes, right? The photography class gets a cool subject matter, and we get a lot of really great pictures. Um, they're required to name their guitar and develop the final package, which includes all the stuff. So research documentation, CAD drawings, CAD renderings, construction images the photography class images and any additional information. So they have a nice packet on here's the design I did and here's how I did it. And I have a nice packet on here's the design they did and here's the design how they did it. And then we get some you know pretty cool images, you know, when people take uh, take a picture of that guitar. By the way, it's freaking gorgeous. It's amazing. Um, these images look a lot better here than they do up there. Um, that's without strings, but um, then we display the guitar. So I tell my students, you go through all this process, and you do get to take the guitar home next semester. We keep them for the semester after they build them, and we display them on campus. So we have a, we now have, it was temporary, but now it's permanent. There are guitar hangers on the wall in one of the stairwells in the math science building. And the stairwell is in a big open area, and it's kind of freestanding, so you can't touch the wall. So we put the guitar hangers on those walls. The guitars hang on the wall. You'll see them here in a second. And nobody can touch them. You can't get to them. Uh, you can throw things at them if you wanted to, but they hang there for an entire semester. Sometimes we'll hang them at local music stores and things like that. This has been awesome for media coverage. Absolutely awesome. Which There's nothing that will get your administration happier with you, funding you and giving you a class than if they get coverage, good, positive coverage in the media. This is perfect for it. Works great. Um, it's great for recruiting as well, so I'll take them to high schools and recruit students from high schools. I get more students in the program and I get more students in my prerequisite classes, which means I get more money. <coughs> Here's an example of a local music store they were hanging up. Here's an example on that wall. So I'm, I'm standing on the stairwell taking pictures, so you can't get to them, but you can see them really, really well. Of course, hung a plaque up there saying, hey, do you want to take this class? Go ahead and scan this code, it'll tell you what the class. Perfect, and that's worked pretty well. Uh, thank you for listening to me, and then there's a couple of guitars you're gonna go through. Nine seconds to spare.